Hello again. Let's talk about the best way to tackle those science and social science passages. It's important that we get one thing clear up front. You don't score any points for reading the passage. You only score points for answering questions right. That means we need to get you in and out of the passage as fast as possible. The key is to not read very much at all. The more you read, the more time you take. And frankly, the more confused the passage can make you. On the science and social science passages, I want you to read the beginning part of the passage slowly, skim the middle part of the passage, and then slow down again at the end. As you read the beginning and the end, you are looking to answer these four specific questions. First, what is the passage about? Second, what is the author's point of view or why did he or she bother to write this? Third, are there other points of view? There aren't always. And fourth, what is the tone? Neutral, persuasive, argumentative, or really argumentative? Let's take a look at this short passage and I think you'll see what I mean. Okay, this is how I read it. Mostly, I stuck to things I could actually understand. First, I get that this is the worst time in history to buy a graphic card. I have no idea what the middle stuff is talking about. I'm blah blah blahing over all of this. Something about commodities prices and something called Ethereum. I have no idea. It's just details, examples, and jargon, so I don't worry about it. Okay, this is a sentence I can understand. GPUs are really expensive because cryptocurrency miners are buying them all up. Now there is another example. I don't care about that. Finally, we get something that looks like a conclusion. High prices are unacceptable because it takes creative people using the best software to drive innovation. Okay. So, from the three lines in blue that we could actually understand, we can answer the four questions. What is the passage about? Graphic cards are expensive because crypto miners are buying them. Author's point of view? High prices are bad because it harms innovation in the video industry. Other points of view? Not really. Tone? Argumentative. The better you get at pulling out the answers to those four questions, the better and faster you'll be at reading comp. It's the essential skill. Those four questions force you to pick out what's important and write it down. Using as few words as possible, get right to the point. When it comes to reading the middle parts of the passage, you should read quickly and pull out just the main points of each paragraph and write it down. Skip the details. If you're doing it right, you should be blah blah blahing a lot. When I have a passage with a lot of paragraphs, I usually just read the first sentence of each paragraph and paraphrase it in a few words. If I have a passage that has one or two big long paragraphs, I blah 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 my way through and just look for those single declarative sentences that tell me this is a main point. Then I write it down in the margin. The lesson and the highlights have some great examples and some great practice that will really help you. Hey everyone, we're about to jump into a couple of examples, but before we do, I just wanted to let you know that we're offering this entire course for $25. Because, well, we don't think that world-class test prep should just be for the rich kids. We think it should be for everyone. So if you're interested in the course, we have details and links right down there in the description. All right, now let's head over to some examples. The four questions are, what's the passage about? What's the author's point of view? Are there other points of view? And the tone. How argumentative is it? Let's take a look at an example. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I read this. First, I see this is from a nature book. Remember, always read the italicized stuff. Next, I just read the first sentence of the passage and it tells me it's about bats. This is easy. First question, what's this passage about? I'm writing down bats. Next, we need to find out 
what the author thinks about bats. Now, in the first sentence, the author talks about categories. So it's possible, I guess, that the entire passage is about like how many categories of bats there are. And that might be the case. But we're also going to look and see if we get anything else. Now, I'm guessing what's coming up is a whole paragraph about categories of bats. And yep, that's exactly what's going on. Let's see. I see tropical bats, blah, 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 blah. Bats feed on nectar. Bats eat lizards. Okay, we don't care. Blah, blah, blah. Vampire bats, lots of details we don't care about. Something about sleeping livestock and anticoagulants. I have no idea. Blah, blah, blah. Wait, okay. I see a conclusion y type sentence. It says, having studied them. Excellent. Okay. What did you find out when you studied them? Tell us. Bats are sweet tempered. Could that be the point that bats are sweet tempered? Maybe. Seems a little odd, but maybe. So let's keep reading. Ah, now we finally get it in the last sentence. Our fear of bats tells us about human fear. That is the author's point of view. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. Author's point of view, this thing is about bats and human fear. Now, are there, are there other points of view? Now, I didn't see any. And finally, what's the tone? How argumentative is this thing? Well, I think the author wants you to believe what she's saying is true, so we'll call it persuasive, but it's not really a huge argument or anything. Okay, next up, we want to pick out the main idea of each paragraph. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're basically going to read the, the first sentence of each paragraph and see what we get. So on paragraph two, let's read the first sentence. It's about things that live in at night aren't normal. All right, let's do some blah, blah, blahing because I think we're just going to get a lot of examples of that. Yes, okay. We are looking to see if we get another conclusion-y type of statement. And I think we do. We get one that says we associate night dwellers with people up to no good. Okay, keep reading, blah, blah, blah. I usually check the end of the paragraph as well to see if we get any other nuggets. And it turns out in this case we do. It turns out that we suspect anything living outside the usual rules are outlaws or ghouls. Okay, uh, to get that in a few words, I'm going to write down, uh, we don't like night things. Next paragraph. All right, what do we get? First sentence, bats have always been uh, frightening in religion and myths for people all over the world. Okay, that's helpful. I think that's what that paragraph is about. And I'm guessing the rest of the paragraph is just going to be a bunch of examples of myths of bats in a whole, whole bunch of different cultures all over the world. And yeah, that's exactly what we're going to get. And we don't care about the details. If we get asked about bats in myths or religion, we know where to look. But we don't need to memorize everything in this paragraph. And we're just going to scan it to see if there's any other good nuggets in here. Let's see, what do we get? We get ancient Egypt, Egyptians, blah, 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 Mayans, blah, 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 other Central American cult cultures, blah, blah, Dracula, blah, 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 and that's it. So for this paragraph, I'm writing down like scary myths and religions around the world. So when we put this all together, we get that the passage is about bats. Bats tell us a lot about human fear. Humans don't like things that creep around at night and bats are portrayed as scary and frightening in lots of myths and religions from around the world. And believe it or not, you are now ready to quickly and easily answer any question they throw at you. And what's going to blow your mind is that you are actually better prepared to answer the questions than if you had read the entire passage. Don't believe me? Let's take a look at this question. Let's say the test asks you this question. The author's main point of the passage is that. Okay, we know that the main point of the passage is that it's about bats, and we know the author's point of view is it's about human fear. So we need an answer that closely mimics those two ideas. We're looking for bats, and we're looking for human fear. A is out. A talks about bats, but not human fear. B is out too. B talks about nocturnal creatures, which I guess could refer to bats, but there's nothing about human fear. C is out. C talks about human fear, but nothing about bats. D is a winner. 
D talks about both bats and human fear. Notice how literally we read the passage and how literally we answer those first four questions and then how literally we read the question and each answer choice. And because we haven't filled up our heads trying to memorize a bunch of examples or details, we see the main points very, very clearly and we stick to them. The answer choices must adhere to your analysis of the author's main point. Whatever happens, don't let the answer choices push you around. You know what the main points are. You've pulled them out. You wrote them down. Stick to them. Hey everyone, so I hope you really liked the video and found it super helpful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe as well. Also wanted to let you know, we are offering the entire ACT and SAT course for 25 bucks because we think that world-class test prep shouldn't just be for the rich kids. We think it should be for everyone. So if you're interested in the course, we have description and links down below. See you next time.